if you have styrofoam, you can cut the shapes out of this and um, use glue to paste them on. I'm gonna stick with the, the, um, the stamp. So letterboxing is, um, it's like a scavenger hunt, right? Like you, you get clues, you go find, follow the clues and you find a box out in the woods or in a park or like they're all over the place. Actually, like I'm not an expert, but I've been hanging out with um, Kim McLean and Jillian and some of the other Girl Scout volunteers that have um, taught me a few things about letterboxing over the years. And so Connecticut is one of the, like we go first and second of how many boxes there are to find in Connecticut. So there's probably like 7,000 of them. You'd never know it unless you go um, go to the website to find the clues. So you get the clues, you go find the box, um, you take your personal stamp and you say, I was here by taking your stamp and stamping it in the book that's in the box. And you take the stamp that's in the box and you put it in your book and you hide everything back where it was and you go off. So um, you can do it any place. Our Connecticut State Forests have letter boxes in them. It's always good to check the clues before you go there um, anytime, just to make sure that um, nobody's made a comment like they couldn't find it. Um, what else? So, okay, so let's make a, make a, a beginner letter box stamp. Okay. So things to remember is that you want it to be one layer and you want everything to stay on top of your, of your um, flat hard surface because what's gonna happen is you're gonna press down and make a stamp. Always good to just make a design. When you're starting, don't make letters because they're really hard. They can turn backwards when you're done. So, Susan, have you ever been letterboxing? I have, my troop has gone letterboxing a couple times. We love it. Yeah. And you live near Camp Laurel, right? I do, yep. So we go out to Camp Laurel and um, we went this uh, fall actually, and we went, had a lot of fun. The girls brought their journals and did their stuff. It was really fun. Um, and we do a big weekend there, but like I said, there are boxes are all over. I know there, there's, I was looking um, this weekend, there's some up in the Naugatuck State Forest near me too. So these are just, I'm making a random, random pattern, right? It's not gonna look like anything. I know um, sometimes the Girl Scout camps do like um, a theme when you go out and the boxes are all with a theme and that's kind of fun. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. Here at Ansiox, the girls who carved um, carved the boxes, loved Harry Potter. Mm. So they're all Harry Potter, Potter themed. Um, but I know that they're going to be making, um, they told me they're working on something else. Oh. They're, actually, they're actually graduating from high school, probably going off to college next year. So. I'm gonna have to come do the Harry Potter ones before they take them away. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So anyway, so you make a pile, you make a, a design. This is my abstract <laughs> letterboxing stamp. Um, when you go letterboxing, you find a box, usually it's a carved one, either a store-bought or a handmade one. And so when you're carving, you use a very solid piece like this. It's, you can use a rubber, a rubber eraser or you can buy the carving material. You draw your design and then you use a gouging tool, which is pretty sharp, always away from you, um, carve away from you. you. You make your design. So like this is what mine looks like. Um, my camp name is Acorn, so I did an acorn. It's actually our state tree to the white oak. A little bit of information. So I've got my beginner stamp, and what I'm going to do is just ink it up. It doesn't matter what size ink pad you have, and it doesn't matter what size, what color your um, shapes are, because they're all going to be whatever color your ink is. So I'm just going to ink up my Add. Okay, so another thing to do is test it to make sure that your everything is working. So I'm going to put it on my paper, press down, and there's my design. Right, that's great. So that's the really super quick way of how to make a letterbox um, boxing kit. The other thing that you would need is a couple pieces of paper folded over. We use these little log books at Girl Scouts. To start, it's a good idea to give your letterboxing stamp a blanket because they get messy. So, and then for us, what we tend to do is just put everything 
into a Ziploc bag. Um, it just makes it easier to carry. So my, I'm bringing my, my stamp and my ink pad and I'm bringing my log book. And I think that's it. Um, I'll show you what a letter, this is what we're looking for. Some, um, this is a little bit bigger than usual. If you're ever gonna make a letter box, it's great to use these things that have a little rubber gasket because they snap shut and keep the moisture out. Inside, there's gonna be like a little log book. We usually put them inside a bag. Um, it's good etiquette to bring extra bags so, and things so that you can repair about um, anything that's wet or broken. At Girl Scout camp, we usually have an ink pad inside it. And if your box does have an ink pad, put that underneath your box, your paper. Even though it's in a bag, if something happens and the seal is broken, your, your log book is gonna be above the water if it ever gets wet. And then inside the box that you're finding, we'll have a little stamp that's gonna need this morning. So this is the type of thing we're looking for. If, you're, if you ever want to do a series of letter boxes and you want to plant them on someone's property, you need to ask permission, right? So we, we, we're Girl Scouts, we love the outdoors and anybody should be following Leave No Trace. And you might think, well, how is leaving a box in the woods? Leave No Trace. You always get permission um, and you leave it just off the side of the trail. Um, you, when you're going looking for them, you wouldn't, if you're in a, your whole family's going out, you're not gonna send everybody out to go find um, the box, send one or two people um, so that we're not trampling everything. And on the DEP website, there is a form that you can fill out to request to plant a series of boxes or a letter box. So always get permission and be responsible because if you plant a box, you're responsible for it. You can't just leave it there because that becomes trash. You need to go out and monitor it. So I'm gonna put my hat. It's good. Okay. So what we're gonna do is I, I know, right? I love I it. I have my, <laughs> you know, I lost my hat at my troop meeting. Oh no. And I went back into the, I know, it's like I made it. So I figured I can always make another one. And I thought, oh, well, I can always, um, maybe I went in the other day to, to check on something into the meeting place, into the church and someone had saved it. So oh, yay, yay. yay for people returning their stuff, being responsible. That's okay. exciting. Okay, I'm taking me out of the holder. So right. I'm bringing my clipboard. If you're going out, it's good to have, bring a clipboard with you just because you can use it as a mobile desk or something. Yeah. And I have the clues, but Susan, do you have the clues too? I can pull them up. That's okay. I mean, if you want to read them, you you watch. I'll when we get outside, you, we'll have you follow the clues. Okay. <laughs> so, just monitoring to see if there's any comments. I haven't seen any yet, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna switch us around. So. Yes. Perfect. Am I switching? Yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah. Okay. There Maybe go. five times I did that, right? That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, the first clue is, okay. Do I get it? No, I got it. Summer swimmers change here and winter souls find their shoes. So if anybody was on the GSFCT at home Facebook page this morning, you saw that they did something from the Facebook page, but there's our pool across the way. I don't know if you can see it. Yep. Yep, there it is. On the fence in the shower house. So summer swimmers change here. Winter souls find their shoes. Letterbox and clues can either be like riddles or poems, or they can be very direct, like go 15 paces and turn to 30 degrees. Um, but I'm gonna go where people find their winter shoes. Winter souls find their shoes. That's where we keep our snowshoes. Okay. Okay. And then the next clue says, with my back to the door, um, your trail lies ahead, go across the main camp road and rest. Hmm. So I'm gonna go, it's great that the guys plow. Yes. 
you know, this morning I came out and the mud was frozen and now it's starting to get it's warming up. Right? It's a beautiful day outside. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful, yeah. Okay, I cross the camp main road and rest. So that means stop. Um, so it's our cook shelter. Take 19 paces down the path to meet the twin sister tree. So pace is like two steps. So I'm gonna count every time my right foot hits the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, and then I have to look for a twin sister tree. Which the cases are a little bit bigger. So a twin sister tree has two trunks, and they are two main trunks, and they come out of the same base. But those are kind of separate. I didn't really realize that one was there this morning. But so this is a twin sister tree. It's really a good example, right? One base, two two main trunks. Ooh, it's got like another one up there. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to go left into where the fire finds fuel. Turning left. Thanks, Roy, for plowing. Mm -hmm. If it was moving. It's great that we can come back, back here where the fire ring is. Okay, and where the fire finds fuel. Hmm, I think I see something. Yeah. I'm little, I can't see my picture, but I think that's fine. We see it. <laughs> Uh, it smells so good. This is all um, from the cedar trees that, uh, that came down in the storm. Oh, yeah. It smells beautiful. Um, let's see. Okay. My back is against the logs, and I look to 10 o'clock. So this is something, if you've learned to tell time on a digital clock, it might be kind of hard, right? But <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a good lesson, right? So 12 o'clock is straight ahead, and 10 o'clock is about here. Okay. So my clue says, um, walk past the cedar tree, not too far. The cedar tree, it's one of the last ones that's standing here. It's really pretty. Okay, not too far. Go to the grandma stump with all her children around her. Okay. So it's a stump. It has, grandma has kids all around her. Ah, I see. Okay. I thought that was a good description. What do you think? Yes. Yep, I agree. <laughs> um, it's kind of a cool one. And then go to the left, look for a needle in the wood pile. So oh, I, I love it when people find things like that and they kind of display them, right? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> it's unusual. I have a I have a, mm, a skeleton of a bush in my woods that I put up on a stump because it's beautiful. Absolutely. And so then one of the things about letterboxing is that if you are hiding a letterbox, you don't want to hide it under a, inside a wood. Um, not, something safe, right? not inside a stone wall. Stone walls are pretty special to the etiquette. And Yes. So again, inside what we would do is open it up. It's like frozen. Oh, it's a different way. Sorry. And inside you'd find what we looked at before. It has a little it has a little book. It's got the smiley face and another ink pad. So when you're done, it's important to make sure that everything gets back inside the box. Okay. We're going to pretend because my hand is cold that we were um, that we would take my stamp and I put it in the in the box, the book that's in the box, and I would take the stamp in the box and I would put it in my into the letterbox and thing. So like I say, it's when the snow's not on the ground, 
you know, even on a winter day, this is a good thing to do. Um, and you, if you get into the carving part of it, if you love the art, if you really are into that, winter is a great time to do that to get ready for the spring or the late winter. Um, the other part of it is making sure that you hide the, the box just where you found it or where, better yet, where the clue says it's supposed to be. So I'm just gonna do this. People who letterbox a lot can see a pile of sticks and they know right away what's going on. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, Nicole just said you're the letterboxing expert, so. No, yeah, no, I am not the expert, but I enjoy it and I had fun doing it. So, um, yeah, so that's it. So I'm going to head back inside the building. Awesome. That's fun. Yeah, it's, it's so. I was just gonna say, has no Nicole ever been letterboxing? I don't know, Nicole, have you ever been letterboxing? <laughs> Let's ask her. I'm looking for comments. Yeah. It's really. Oops, I dropped my box. But um, we also have other winter stuff we do at camp, right? Like winter sports and. Snowshoes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the snowshoes, I can here. I'll go back and just peek at the snowshoes too. So since we have it open, right? Since we're here. Um, if you missed it this morning. So, yeah, I mean, you can go. You can some places. You can go sledding. You can always go for a hike. You can have a campfire. You can come out and watch the night sky. It's chilly, but it's a great place. We have, I think it was last weekend, the weekend before, we had girls that were sleeping out in their own tents, you know, for, because of COVID, our friend They're COVID. Brave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Nicole says she has not been letterboxing, but she hopes to in the spring, so we'll have to break that. Ah, okay. So these are just inside. Um, these are the where the snowshoes are. We have snowshoes at in Stanford, this camp in Stanford. New Fairfield, Candlewood, Rocky Creek in Stanford, Candlewood in New, in New Fairfield, um, Ansiox in Oxford, Laurel in Lebanon, and Yankee Trails in um, Tallinn, Connecticut. So kind of spread out around the world and our troops come, members come and just reserve them and have a good time. With them. So they're just waiting, waiting for some feet. Some girls got to come check them out. Yeah. 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 So next weekend, I mean, things to do at camp next weekend. Um, Kim, who and her husband Star Dad Jeff are doing the. Um, they're doing a uh, space exploration because I guess it's the time when you can of the day where you can see both the sun and the moon. So that's what they're going to be doing at the camp next weekend. It's getting a little windy. The yeah, storm is coming, scary. right? I know Regina had said she was looking forward to coming snowshoeing tomorrow, but with a storm, hmm. they were not going to do it. Okay, so I'm headed back Bummer. into okay. the lodge. Yeah. Toasty warm. <laughs> the heat's on. <laughs> the heat is on, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of time spent here. Okay, and that is pretty much it. So letterboxing, my tips would be, if you can, come to one a letterboxing event that we have, the Girl Scouts. If you're not a Girl Scout, you can come visit us if you want and try it. Um, start easy, make a, make a stamp. You can always change it. Um, you might want to get a trail name, like since my camp name was Acorn, I thought Acorn is a good trail name. Make sure that you leave no trace. We don't want people trashing the woods um, and leaving things there and trampling to go in and out to get the letter boxes. And really just enjoy it. Oh, one of the best things about letter boxes is that when you hide a box, you tend to hide it 
near something that's really special to you or a beautiful overlook or a great boulder, you know, something that's really outstanding. So letterboxers tend to hide them in interesting places like that. So if you've always been hiking a certain trail and you haven't looked at the letterboxing, you looked at it from a letterboxing point of view, you might have missed some really cool spaces. So um, like I said, the DEP website has information about the letterboxes in their state forests. And then the two um, in the document that we had for Girl Scouts on the DEP website shows um, atlasquest.com and letterboxing.org are two of the best places to find clues um, for letterboxes in in America, probably. So uh, including the ones that are um, at the state forest because letterboxers will go and if they find something, um, you know, maybe it, it moved or whatever, they'll make a comment. So it's good to check there to find out that what's going on. And that is my spiel about letterboxing. Yay, that was good. Thank you, Kim, for introducing it to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. Yeah, my troop always has a blast when we go out to do it. So it's really fun. Yeah, I know. And it's been around like my kids, 34 or 33. She, um, she went letterboxing with her troop when she was little. So yeah. And I was surprised. I looked up um, some letterboxes. Like I live in a tiny, tiny town. And I said, oh, there won't be any here. And there was a bunch. Um, so you're surprised where you find them. Right. Sometimes they're inside buildings. Mm, yeah, that. all over the place. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, after you go letterboxing, a good thing to warm up with is hot chocolate. So I thought I would bring some hot chocolate science for us to do today, too. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. That's, that's the best part about winter, <laughs> as my kids say. <laughs> um, so uh, to be scientists, the first thing we want to do is make a hypothesis. So a hypothesis is kind of like an educated guess. So I have three packets of hot chocolate here, and I'm going to use three different temperatures of water to see which one dissolves the hot chocolate the fastest. So do we, I brought ice water. I brought room temperature water. It's been sitting out. Here's my ice. I'm going to actually put a little water in it. I brought room temperature water that's been sitting out, and I've got my tea kettle on the stove um, with, with hot water. So do we think that the cold, the ice cold water, the room temperature water, or the super hot water will dissolve the hot chocolate the fastest? You guys can think about that for a minute. If you want to drop your hypothesis in the chat, I can see it and keep track of it for you. Good scientists keep a notebook too. So you can have a notebook with your observations. If you have a piece of paper, you could also write it down. You can put it in your logbook there. Here, yep, there you go. <laughs> Double duty. All right, here's my tea kettle, hot water. So I'm using mason jars just because you guys can see through them while I stir, but you guys can use mugs or whatever you've got. So let me, I'm gonna tilt my laptop down so you guys can see a little bit better. So we'll start with the ice cold water right here. And oops, you can do your hot chocolate. I like to start the timer when I dump the packet in. But as scientists, you wanna make sure that you keep your experiment the same all the way through. So if you wanna start your timer and then dump the packet in, you can do that. If you wanna dump the packet in and then start your timer, that's fine. Just make sure you do it the same for each one, okay? So- Be consistent, right? Yep, be consistent, that's it. Ava says she thinks the hot water. I think we'll, we'll find out. So here comes the packet. I'm gonna dump it in. And then I'm going to start my timer. So go. So I'm going to stir and see how long it takes until it dissolves and there's no clumps left in the ice water. I always wondered if you could put it in the microwave after the I, I think I can. Clumps are sometimes good though. I'm just saying, sometimes a little <laughs> clump of, of chocolatey goodness is, is kind of nice. Some people like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm more of a like I like it to be dissolved and then I like to put chunks of marshmallow in it but that's me <laughs> yeah. yeah this one's kind of clumpy I don't know can you guys see how it's really dark it's dark and it's clumpy yeah I mean no it I can see it it's very chocolatey looking chocolatey that's what I was like I could flip on the light if you can't see it as well but mm -hmm. yeah all these big see, clumps mm. yeah it's like when I lick the spoon 
Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> then we can't do our experiment. You can look the spoon after. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll bring you some at camp. <laughs> oh, yeah, see? Mm -mm. <laughs> Still going. Still going. Let's see. Anybody having better luck? I don't know. This one is I'm not really good. marshmallows. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Maybe marshmallows and giant chunks of chocolate. I don't know. <laughs> then they're chocolate covered marshmallows. Ooh, there's a good one. Mm -hmm. I've seen some people make um, Samoa hot chocolate and they put coconut and chocolate in it and a little bit of caramel. Ooh. It sounds really good. It sounds like really, yeah. Let's see. I tried. It, Good. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say we're almost at two minutes here, and I'm still like, Ooh. so You're really hard there. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really dissolving, so I think I'm gonna call it at two minutes, and I'm gonna stick it off to the side. Maybe it'll dissolve by itself. Okay. Then I have my room temperature water that I spilled. <laughs> Want to make sure I'm keeping my water levels even. I put it like right under there. The other day I tried to make hot cocoa with with just powdered milk and baking cocoa. Yep. So it didn't have sugar in it. Yep. Was it? We yeah. did that at our one of our workshops a week or two ago. We made um, Aztec hot chocolate and we did the baking mm. and then we put a little um, chili powder in it. That was interesting. Mm, yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. So I'm dumping in my room temperature water. Full, and then I'm gonna start my stopwatch. Okay, go. I'll stir this one. Nicole says yes. You get we get to have the chocolate marsh chocolate marshmallows with. Uh, oh yeah, now they sell marshmallows with chocolate on the inside. Yeah. Have you seen that in the store? I haven't, but that sounds really good. Yeah. I'm a pretty big fan of anything with chocolate, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. My dad was a chemist and in the labs, they, when something had to be stirred for a long time, they have these magnets that were like an oval shape and they were coated with plastic and it went inside the solution inside the container, right? So it would go down, it would sink to the bottom. And then underneath the container, the glass container, they would have a metal I don't, know if, I don't know if it was magnetized or what, but it would spin around on the bottom and that would spin the magnet inside the beaker or the contain the flask and it would keep the solution stirred. That's so interesting. Hmm. We only got to go in once or twice, a, once a year. Wow. It was very top secret. Okay, right. hmm. interesting. <laughs> Maybe he'll have to help us get some cool stuff for the lab. <laughs> Does it look like it's working? Is, is there any difference between that and the cold water? Yep, this one looks like it's stirring better. So I don't have as many clumps on the top. It's a little yeah. bit. So I, I would say it's floating. Yeah, I would say it's still not dissolved completely, but it's definitely better than the other one. It's more liquidy. All right, so that was a minute and 45 seconds on this one. That was better. We're getting better. Yep. All right, the hot water. Let's see. Reset my stopwatch. Oops. Timer, stopwatch, reset. Okay. Now let's try the hot water. And this one, I can already see as I dump it in how much more it's coming down and it's dissolving. That didn't happen with the other ones, it kind of floated on the top. So I'm going to hit go. I'm going to stir. Right away, this one way better. I'm only like what ten seconds in. Look, it's almost all gone already. Oh wow. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna stop my stopwatch. That was 23 seconds, and it's all completely mixed in. Let's see. Yay, it's all. So when they say use hot water or hot milk or whatever you like to make your hot chocolate with, I recommend that because otherwise. Here's our difference. 
You can get your good, nicely dissolved hot chocolate in the hot water. This one is foamy. It dissolved a little bit better. It's foamy. I would probably still drink this one. <laughs> That's the room temperature, right? Room temperature, yep. And this one, the ice water is still chunky, even after I let it sit. So, so the only thing that changed was the temperature of the water then. Yep, yep. I used the exact same packet of hot chocolate. I used the exact same amount of water, everything else. It was just the temperature that changed. So does anybody this know? This is, uh, thanks for being part of the event. I wish I was drinking some nice, warm, hot chocolate. <laughs> oh, I should have delivered, right? <laughs> it was good. Um, yeah, so when you warm up after letterboxing, you definitely want to use the hot water or the hot milk or whatever you make the hot chocolate with. Does anybody know why the hot water did that? Anybody want to throw out some comments? Hmm. Tricky. Let me see. So the only difference is the heat. I'm trying to think of things that I've done before with hot water that um, that melt things. Like I used to have little sponge. Do you ever have those little sponge shapes? Yes. And you that are the inside the little gelatin pack, yep. Yeah. And you, yeah. if you put them in cold water, nothing really happens. It just gets gooey mess. But if you put them in the warm water, it melts faster. Mm -hmm. Don't know if that's the same. Hmm. And what else? Yeah. Suppose if I put hot water over ice, that melts it. Yes, it does. That is true. <laughs> or snow or any of that kind of good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Don't you wish sometimes that you could just shovel your driver away that way just like splash hot water on it and make it go away yep i do that would be brilliant <laughs> maybe somebody will invent something like that i don't know right. like a heat, a water heater for your hose but not, probably not a good way to do yeah. use water though i saw a guy go out with a flamethrower once i think that was also not a good idea so <laughs> yeah i did see that sometimes <laughs> But science is there, so melting things. So when you guys put um, the hot water on the stove, the heat is putting more energy into the water. And so the water starts to boil because it has so much energy in it. And that extra energy that we put in with the heat is what helps to dissolve our solution because that extra energy makes the particles of the solution go faster and faster and faster. And then they dissolve quicker in the solution. So that's why hot water helps to dissolve it quicker. There's our science for the day. <laughs> and now the, the best part of the science experiment is the taste test afterwards. So <laughs> I highly recommend either popping some marshmallows in or candy cane. My kids really like candy canes in their hot chocolate or whatever you want and then taking a taste test. Nicole said, depending on the temperature outside, you could freeze the hot water and just have an icy mess instead of just snow. <laughs> yeah. True story. Because it's actually a scientific thing too that the hot water will freeze faster than the cold water. So that could pose mm -hmm. a problem. Mm -hmm. Right, and clearer. Cool. So, yeah. So I'm happy that we did this today. Yes, this was great. <laughs> I got to come to camp, which I yeah. always appreciate. Yeah. And yeah, I made another letterboxing kit and I'm good. Excellent. And now we'll have some hot chocolate and call it a day. <laughs> Thanks to the DEEP for having us. And Kristen, thanks for having us. This was fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. You good? Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs> thanks for having us. <laughs> so, hmm. I got to find the oh, button. Live. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're still connected. I don't know what's happening. Where's the button? Let's see. Live on Facebook. Stop live stream. Bye, guys. <laughs>